Welcome back to another week of Hawk News. I'm Tyrus Williams. And I'm Madison Cobbs. Hawk News is a student-produced newscast recorded live on the campus of Red Oak High School. The Fine Arts Department's hosting the <laughs> Fine Arts Extravaganza this Thursday. Theater, choir, and band will be holding performances in the cafeteria. The NJRTC conducted their annual inspection last Wednesday. Our Hawk News Day reporter spoke to members of NJRTC about the inspection. So before inspection occurred, we were all followed in, did our initial drill, then inspection occurred, everyone did real well, and then after inspection, we were ready for a platoon drill where we marched around the gym and we parked ourselves back and then all platoons finished their drill as well. And then after that, we all sat down and everyone else put on the show with flipping the rifles and unarmed exhibition marching around and the color guard presenting the colors. Well, I was a little nervous, I'm not going to lie. Um, the lady who was inspecting, she was first at it, so I had to guide her through it a little bit. But she did an amazing job, and everyone did very, very good. Uh, AMI was a pretty stressful thing to go through, but it's, it's, it's interesting to say the least. People come up, we do marching, then before that, people come up and they inspect us, they ask us questions, they, they look at our uniform to see if we met, uh, have any malfunctions, you would so call. And... Uh, and then after that, you march, and then after the marching, the platoon marching, there's teams, unarmed, armed, uh, color guard exhibition. And uh, that was interesting to watch. But uh, other than that, we all walked, after that, we all walked around the gym, and uh, then we formed back up and concluded the AMI. Basically, it was the annual military inspection. Um, retired and like current active duty, they come and inspect us and see how our platoon is doing throughout the year. We've been preparing since September, like mid-September. And then this week, we practiced two times. So like it was like official this week. And basically, we showcase what we can do and how our LTC is at Red Oak High School. Uh, today was the annual military inspection. It was very, it was my first time doing it. It was very well. Um, we only had two days to practice in the gym because normally we practice outside, so we don't really have barriers. But we were crammed in the gym, and last minute we was all. It was very complicated, but we actually pulled it through, and I'm glad we did. My favorite part was the marching when we all marched around as a platoon. That's my specialty. Is I'm very good at drill. Definitely the, the unarmed exhibition. That was very, very fun. I don't. Probably during the, when I was in, when I was doing armed, we were flipping rifles. And that was, that was pretty fun. My favorite part is probably being rewarded. And in the end, when we all came together as a family, as a, in a team, and we just did what we had to do. My favorite part was drill. The hardest part, probably the inspection. For me it wasn't that difficult, but for most, answering the questions correctly on the chain of command and the order to the sentry is pretty difficult for most. Definitely marching. The drill. Flipping the rifles, <laughs> like nine and a half pounds. That's uh, pretty interesting. It's hard to flip those. The hardest part was probably preparing because you, you know, you, I didn't know who the um, drill inspectors were or what they were going to ask me. And like, we have a lot of knowledge that we need to remember and, you know, just know. And I didn't know what was going to be asked. So that was very hard. Uh, the hardest part was, I'm going to say inspection because you don't know what they're going to ask. So you're very nervous. I think it was. I think it was a great experience, a great learning experience, too. It was great, actually. I liked it a lot. The experience. It was, like I said, stressful, but it also helps you focus because you have to focus on little things as well as the large ones. I think it went really good. I feel like we, we, we could have get better. I mean, obviously we could have did better, but we, I think we did pretty good. I think I did very well for my first time. I think we all did very well. Some of us was our first time, and I think we just did well. I won the exemplary um, dress uh, medal. It's because I had perfect knowledge, and then I looked decent. 
Red Oak High School Student Council hosted a blood drive last Thursday. Our Hawks News student reporters spoke to Student Council about the event. Um, we got to school earlier and, you know, made space in the library for the Red Cross people to come and set up their stuff and do their jobs. Um, to get them involved in saving people's lives, they, my job at the blood drive was to talk to people donating, you know, make sure they were comfortable. So I got to talk to them, have conversations with them as they were donating their blood. Um, this one, one uh, student said he did it because he was inspired by a TV show to be a hero. So he donated blood because he wanted to save lives. Sophomore students enrolled in world history classes took a field trip to medieval times last Thursday. A Hawk student reporter spoke to students who went the trip. I thought it was going to be more fun and just more entertaining overall. I feel like I wasted my $45. Oh, uh, yeah, you're good. Because it's medieval times. Love that place. Been there once before. High expectations. Um, I didn't really have any expectations. I just thought it would be fun. It's going to be old timey. Well, I'd been to medieval times before. So, um, you know, I was expecting some people to, you know, be jousting and. Um, that kind of thing, and yeah, that's pretty much what happened. Uh, nothing really big. I was just hoping to buy a sword or something. I didn't really have any. It was a field trip. I don't really think I had any, to be honest. I thought that the thing would be bigger, but that's like it. It was okay, I think. The end was, like, the beginning was very boring, and I wanted to take a nap. I mean, because like the last time I went there, I, I was younger, so I didn't, I wasn't paying attention as much as I was when I was younger because little kids are... <sighs> but yeah, I was older, I was paying attention more, saw more, more observant, knew more, so it, it was a lot cooler. I, th I think it was pretty fun. It was, definitely, it was definitely worth it. I enjoyed it. At the beginning, I was a little worried because um, instead of all that, they were learning about cyberbullying at medieval times, which was interesting. Um, but then it got back on track. That was, it was fun. It was, it was pretty good, it was pretty good. Um, we saw the show, the food was okay, and then we just played with the swords after. Pretty fun, I guess. It wasn't like quite what I expected, but it was fun. When the people were battling each other and fighting. Like, like from what I remember, like the fighting was good, but that time it was way better. Like they lasted longer, they were more suspenseful. Um, one of the times whenever they, they, the, the swords landed, the, spark, the sparks flew everywhere. Oh, that was so cool. Uh, I think when we had sword fights after the, after the match, I think that was pretty fun. I got my little paper crown signed by one of the knights, so that was cool. When the knights were fighting, that's my favorite part. The chicken. <laughs> the chicken was atrocious. There was no flavor. When they were asked questions about bullying and things like that. <laughs> The waiting to get inside the building. Uh, the chicken was kind of dry. I'm not gonna lie, the chicken was kind of dry. Um, I was a little confused why we were learning about cyberbullying specifically at medieval times, but um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, when we first got there, it was like really crowded, and it was just really annoying, like getting everywhere. There's not really, there's not anything I didn't really like. It was overall okay. Today marks the 81st anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. On Sunday, December 7, 1941, a surprise military strike was carried out by the Japanese Navy against the United States at Pearl Harbor Navy Base. 2,335 American soldiers and civilians were killed. Another 1,143 were wounded. And four battleships were sunk by the Japanese Navy. Then, President Franklin D. Roosevelt called the day as a day that will forever live in infamy. The attack brought the United States into a World War II, which led to a turn in the war for the Allied nations. In 1994, the United States made December 7th of every year Pearl Harbor Remembrance Day. When we return on Hawk News, we will have your weather update. Yeah, I was going to go to the bathroom for a second. Oh, okay. See you then. Okay. 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 Okay.
jungle. And now for the weather report. Drew, what are the temperatures looking like today? Thank you, Madison. Well, right now the temperature is 76 degrees. Tonight, the low is 64 degrees with a 0% chance of precipitation. On Friday, the high is 73 degrees. But if you're going to the game on Friday night, the low is 61 degrees with a 0% chance of rain. And for your weekend highlights, there will be a cool weekend with highs in the upper 60s and lows in the 50s. There will also be moderate winds with a 70% chance of precipitation on Saturday and cloudy skies on Sunday. Your entertainment corner is next. I'm Monica Arrow Megason, and this is your Entertainment Corner. Last week, the Red Oak High School musical class performed You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown. We spoke to a few of the actors about the behind the scenes feelings during the show. I was Charlie Brown. I played Snoopy. I was Sally Brown. It definitely had its ups and downs. Um, I, would, I would say that for the most part, it went really well. Mm -hmm. I think it went really well. Um, I think all of our group choreography went well. The hardest parts of the play was getting it down in a month. The easy part uh, was impressing people with um, all of our magic behind the scenes. Um, definitely time management. We got off on a wrong star um, with like picking Joseph the musical and then doing Charlie Brown, so definitely time management. The easiest part was um, like solos and like ones that didn't have a lot of people in it. Um, definitely memorizing lines and our songs and everything. My favorite part was definitely my solo, The Kite. And The Kite flew up in front of the audience and it, it was just a magical moment. My favorite part? Um, I like the opening number. Ooh. Um, definitely Suffer Time. Yeah. My favorite character would have to be Lucy Van Pelt mostly because she has the most iconic solo in musical history. I like Lucy. She was really fun. I'm gonna say Lucy because I really liked her voice. With the holiday season comes the end of the year and every year Spotify releases their Spotify Wrap. Spotify Wrap is the opportunity for all Spotify users to be able to see their data and activity on this platform over the past year as well as to be able to show it on social media to see what everyone's been listening to. Our Hawk News student reporter, Sky Guerrero, interviewed students around the campus to find out their music on their Spotify rap. Who was your top artist for Spotify? Billie Eilish. Taylor Swift. It was Taylor Swift. Lil Baby. It was um, Kanye West, uh, Tyler the Creator, MF Doom, um, Gorillaz, and Michael Jackson. Lana Del Rey. So it was Christopher Madigan, he was the composer for Cuphead, Valve Studio or Orchestra, it's like for Valve, Capcom uh, Sound Studio, it's for Capcom, Pink Guy and Bill Wirtz. Uh, it was Twice. Joji. Frank Ocean. It was Men I Trust. Brit Fires. What was your top song? It was, I think it was As It Was by Harry Styles. Uh, Dancing in the Moonlight. Most Wanted. Los Pollos Humanos by um, some rapper. Dealer. Brian Storm by the Arctic Monkeys, Me and My Broken Heart by Rixton, and Evil Eye by Franz Ferdinand. Uh, Blue Fang. Glimpse of Us. Me and My Husband by Miski. This um, song from like this Italian movie from like 1970. <laughs> my top song on Spotify was um, Sonderson by Brent Fias. Do you think your Spotify rap uh, represented you really well? No. Most of the songs I listened to were from like the end of the year and it only it mostly categorized my songs from the beginning of the year and I'm a different person from beginning of the year, so Um yeah, because I listen to a lot of Harry Styles like in the summer. No. Why? 
Um, I have a lot of different songs that I really like, but I sort of, I listened to like one song like a bunch of times and then it was my top song, so it didn't like accurately represent the actual songs that I really liked, so. Yeah. I would say yeah, because it's like a lot of calming music, you know, and I think it reflects my personality a lot. Honestly, I don't think it represented me that well, because I got into more stuff this year, but you know, it's, those are good songs. <laughs> A little bit. Yes, very much. It's, it's like all the songs I like and like really shows like who I am as a person. The new Netflix series Wednesday is number one in the top trending shows on Netflix. The series stars Jenna Ortega as Wednesday, Catherine Zeta-Jones as Marticia Adams, Emma Myers as Innocent Sinclair, Hunter du Duhan as Tyler Gap Galpin, and Percy Hines as Xavier Thorpe. If you're into fantasy, comedic horror, and supernatural fiction, and wanting to see what awaits Wednesday and Nevermore, you should start watching this new trending series found on Netflix. Midnight's album by Taylor Swift is the number one album trending globally, with Un Verano Sinti by Bad Bunny coming in second, Her Loss by Drake and 21 Savage is third, and Harry's House coming in as the fourth album on Spotify. National Brownie Day is Thursday, December 8th. National Brownie Day is a day for brownie lovers across the nation to enjoy one of their favorite baked goods. So have a brownie, but don't forget to add a scoop of ice cream. Emmy-winning Hollywood star Kirstie Alley passed away December 5th after fighting cancer. She was a well-known actress and had been in 24 movie productions such as Accidental Love, It Takes Two, Salem Witch Trials, Summer School, in Nevada. She's most famously known for playing Rebecca Howe on the 90s sitcom Cheers. Alley was 71. Mistletoe Ranch, a film about a director who finds herself in Hollywood during her romantic comedy within a movie, with a movie within the movie twist, released December 1st. Well, that's all I have for entertainment, but don't go away. Your sports report is next. Hello, I'm Steven Salas, and this is your sports report. The Hogs varsity basketball team played R.W. Gones STEM Academy in a home non-conference game last Friday night. The Hawks battled back and forth, and a late offensive rush pushed the Hawks to a 64-58 win. On Tuesday night, the Hawks took on Arlington Heights in a non-conference game. The Hawks dominated the game from the tip-off and won the game 68-41. The Hawks are now 7-4 on the season. The Hawks will play again this Friday in the Cedar Hill Tournament and next Tuesday against Sam Houston in a non-district road game. The Lady Hawks varsity basketball team played against Lincoln in a home non-conference game last Friday night. The Lady Hawks fell behind early, trailing by as many as 10 points in the first quarter. The Lady Hawks stormed back into the game, second half, and the lead went back and forth. In the final minutes, the Lady Hawks took the lead and held on to win 51 to 49. On Tuesday night, the Lady Hawks played against Skyline in a non-conference home game. The Lady Hawks played tough in a back and forth match, but in the final minutes, a late three came up short and the Lady Hawks lost 42 to 39. The Lady Hawks are now six and seven on the season. Lady, Lady, Lady Hawks play again in their first district home game against Ennis and next Tuesday. The high school swim team will compete on Wednesday at the Duncanville Natatorium in a district meet. And this Friday, we'll, we'll be hosting the Lady Hawks' first scrimmage of the season. Soccer team. Wow. The United States men's national soccer team played against the Netherlands on Saturday in the round, of, of round 16 of the World Cup. The United, States, the United States fell behind early in the game, and then the Netherlands scored a late goal in the first half to take a 2-0 lead into the half. The U.S. men came out in the second half fighting to get back into the game, and a goal from Haji Wright in the 76 men gave the U.S. momentum. But less than five minutes later, the Netherlands scored another goal to take a 3-1 lead, and the U.S. was unable to stage a comeback. And now, the college football playoffs are now set. Georgia sits at number one after winning the SEC championship. 
Michigan is the number two seed after winning the Big Ten, while TCU hauled on to the third seed despite a loss to Kansas State in the Big 12 championship game. And number four seed is Ohio State with only one loss on the season to Michigan. Well, that's all I have for sports, but don't go away. Hawk News will be right back. Thank you for watching Hawk News. Where it's your campus, your news.